And my message for you today, starting us off, is a history background of bears living in Texas and to walk away from today knowing that Texas is bear country. So if you don't mind picking up a sticker, um, promoting that knowledge with your fellow residents and anybody who comes to town, that this is bear country and, and we're, we're happy to have bears back in Texas. But to start us off, I thought I would do a little time jump here. So we're gonna go back to the turn of the 20th century. Um, whether you knew it or not, black bear were actually mascots for many of the military uh, individuals that were stationed out here in West Texas. This is a group that was stationed outside of Marfa, Texas. And as you can see, they're feeding a young cub there. Um, so a lot of the work done out here when those guys could get their hands on a bear, it became the company mascot. Taking us all the way back to when Vernon Bailey actually did the biological surveys of Texas. He traveled the entire state documenting whatever he could about Texas at that point in time. And when he made it out here to West Texas, he noted that black bear were extremely common throughout all of the upper Chisos Basin. There was abundant sign, um, both new and old, of, of black bear being active in the area. He made his way up to the Davis Mountains and reported the same thing. He said black bear were holding their own against unusual odds. Continued north up into the Guadalupes, same story. Black bear are extremely common all throughout West Texas during this point of time. But what exactly did Vernon Bailey mean in the Davis Mountains when he said black bear were holding their own against unusual odds? And what he was referring to was that apparently black bear tastes good. Um, in my research of the history of black bear in the state, I have found newspaper articles from Dallas, Austin, and Houston, as far as Houston, guys, um, throughout the late 1800s talking about ham of wild black bear for sale, or maybe what you really want for Christmas dinner is a Christmas black bear roast. Um, so they were on the menu in the late 1800s. In 1890s, there was the famous Davis Mountain bear hunt that was held every year in November. Ranching families from all over would come and gather for a week-long period um, during November. Um, they said it was not uncommon for them to kill 10 bears, 15, a mountain lion or two, and at that point, even a wolf. So we've changed a lot since then. But that was a common activity. Ten years later, 1901, Vernon Bailey still documents that they're common in the Davis Mountains. But by 1944, when Big Bend National Park was founded, there are reports of essentially no resident bears present in the area. And by the 1950s, Texas considered them to be extirpated. <laughs> This is an image that I thought symbolized that pretty well. This is a bear that was taken near Marfa, Texas. Um, if you're better with vehicles than I am, you could probably put an exact date on that image. But as you can see, um, this kind of symbolizes the end of the black bear era in West Texas. From the 1940s until the 1980s, we were receiving scattered reports of bears wandering across from Mexico, um, in the 1980s, Big Bend National Park started to receive more and more visitors reporting black bear sightings. And Mexico actually led the way in a protection effort for black bear when they closed all hunting seasons in 1985. Now, Texas followed suit two years later where we declared black bears to be endangered in the state in 1987. And then um, in 1988, which is a pretty landmark observation, a visitor actually documented the first female with cubs in the national park, which essentially signals that we may have a breeding population back in the state. That's a huge landmark for a species that was extirpated. In 1996, Texas uh, Parks and Wildlife determined that there were enough bear in this part of the state that we downlisted them from endangered to threatened. In the early 2000s, we actually set up an online database where we keep track of all the observations that are reported to Texas Parks and Wildlife. And over a 21 year period, 2000 to 2021, 
we had a statewide total of almost 500 sightings reported to Texas Parks and Wildlife, with 269 of those coming from District 1 or the Trans-Pecos. This does not include the past year's sightings, and I can tell you that that number would be much higher if I included this past year's sightings. Looking at the trend of that data over time, you can tell that in the past 21 years, um, we had some high activity in the early 2000s. Activity seemed to drop. And uh, around this period of time, we had a really bad drought, 2004. And it was actually reported that all the uh, black bear left the national park and went back into Mexico. They've since returned after that drought seceded. Um, but as you can tell, we've started to see a big uptick here recently. The map there on the right, um, 2020 to 2022, you can see that Brewster's, that vibrant purple color, showing that we've had an extreme number of reports from Brewster County as well as Terrell County. And bringing us up to this past year, I wanted to touch base on the Terlingual Ghost Town Bear and the events that surrounded that individual. I received the first reports of this individual on November 6. He was raiding dumpsters at DB's Rustic Iron Barbecue. And I like to say who can blame him because DB's got great barbecue. Um, me and the staff were down here the very next day, uh, walking town, handing out pamphlets on how to be bear wise, what we can do to mitigate attractants in town. And then um, on November 8th, we actually conducted our first adversive conditioning or hazing of that individual. We shot him with paintballs and then we chased him in the direction away from town. And we did that until nightfall and then we felt pretty secure. He's not coming back, we did our job. Well, the very next day I had a report that he was back in the dumpsters in Terlingua Ghost Town. And so we back down here in Terlingua um, second aversive conditioning effort, we stepped it up. We actually deployed rubber buckshot on top of the paintball guns just to reach out and touch him a little harder this time. Um, he responded extremely well, very fearful of people. Uh, we used the air horn and we got him out of town and we thought, yeah, we finally taught this bear a lesson. Well, guess what? He stayed in town all the rest of the week, it was on November 14th after hazening multiple times that we finally conducted our last adversive conditioning round. Here again, we shot him with paintballs multiple times, hitting with buckshot a couple of times, rubber buckshot, and he was back within 15 minutes. So this was a pretty big wake up call to us. We didn't even have to wait till the next morning to find out he was back at the dumpsters. He was back within 15 minutes. And so because of that behavior that we had established over the past week, two weeks, uh, we met with leadership, discussed the black bear response plan and discussed what our next actions could be. Uh, we decided that no amount of aversive conditioning was going to keep this bear away from dumpsters at this point in time. And so we decided that because our residents were taking steps they needed to to secure attractants, what we needed to do was give them more time. So the goal um, was to give the residents the time they needed to secure those attractants. And so on November 16th, we deployed a trap in Terlingua Ghost Town to catch that individual bear. And this decision was made because we knew we were talking about one bear. It was an extremely high human use area. Um, he was nearly hit by a motorist here in town, and we knew he was not responding to aversive conditioning in a way that was gonna make him stay away from that attractant. He was captured on the night of the 17th, and on the morning of the 18th, we um, darted him, worked up that sedated individual. We took a whole bunch of samples, um, measurements, we worked with BRI to actually put a collar on this individual and put tags in his ear, and then we relocated him to Black Gap, which is one of our very few relocation sites we have in the state. I will note that even though this individual kept coming back to dumpsters, we did report that he was learning a fear of humans the more we hazed him. So he associated us in the green shirts with a really bad time. 
um, which is good. He established a fear of humans, um, but unfortunately that drive to come back to the attractant is so strong in Black Bear, we needed to give our residents more time. And Dana's gonna touch a little bit more on bear behavior and why that is, and then Matt's gonna follow up on um, the relocation effort.